Hey you guys, Dusty here with Eat, Move, Rest and welcome back to our channel. So this is something Aaron and I have both talked about wanting to do is sit down and tell kind of our individual stories. Let's just kind of jump right into it. I wanted to start by telling um, you guys about my life as a child and uh, something that has been pretty much a secret um, for most of my life to to, except for to those who know me well, you know, close friends and family. And I think it's time to kind of share it with the world and talk a little bit about it. The last year or so, I have kind of mentioned it on our channel and on Instagram, but I thought it could actually be, you know, motivating for some people that I have already connected with um, and for their children who might be, um, you know, have similar types of disabilities. So I was actually born with cerebral palsy. There were no real complications um, with the birth and we weren't really sure why um, I was born this way, but I'm super, super fortunate. You know, a lot of people that are born with um, cerebral palsy and other similar disabilities are very, very disabled. So yeah, I feel super fortunate to have lived the you know semi-normal life that I have you know most people growing up never knew that I was born with cerebral palsy and certainly now in adulthood people don't know and probably wouldn't know unless I told them but things were certainly different for me as a child when I was you know just starting to walk obviously my parents could tell that there was something wrong um, but before then they really didn't know so again there was no complication really at birth or anything like that but when I started to walk my parents noticed you know that I had a severe gait my my leg was twisted inward and I walked on my tiptoes on my left side and so they of course brought me in and they did you know all the tests found some scoliosis in my back as a result because I have some hip dysplasia um, and then a leg length discrepancy so my left leg is shorter and like I said twisted inward and yeah so you know starting out when I was you know a year and a half two years old my first shoes had this massive outer insole that was you know something that I, I don't remember I was too young but what I do remember you know around the age of five or six was having to wear a brace so I had a very uncomfortable really hard plastic brace that strapped on my left calf and actually went down into my shoe to help straighten and hold my toes up and in addition to that i did a lot of physical therapy so looking back i'm sure the brace did help but i do remember it being uncomfortable it was embarrassing to have to wear i do remember you know being the line leader in first and second grade and having to wear this cast and feeling embarrassed and kids always asking me you know what was wrong what'd you do and you know i was never really sure what to say that being said the physical therapy i know for a fact changed my life and i'm so thankful that you know my parents and the people that were around um, did set me up the way that th they did so I would you know leave class daily and do stretching and if I remember right our my physical therapist her name was Birdie um, would come to the house frequently I'm not sure if it was every day or every other day um, and stretch me out you know we'd spend probably a half hour every day doing you know movement exercises and a lot a lot of stretching um, and that really helped and I remember her always encouraging me you know to be active and to stay active and to play sports which was good because I was like such an athletic little kid in spite of you know my discrepancy and so that's what I did and you know as I got older I got stronger I graduated from the thick outsole of the shoe to, to having a rubber insole so kids couldn't see that I had uh, you know an obvious um, thick shoe that was uh, frankly kind of embarrassing and so that helped um, but it was still you know something that that affected my everyday life you know I, I went to therapy and they would teach me to think you know heel strike heel strike heel strike and even today I find myself you know focusing on you know striking the ground with my heel first heel first and these types of things that were ingrained in me um, but then again always also being encouraged to take time every day to stretch and to lay down on my back and to stretch my back out and also to stay limber you know to stay active 
And again, of course, my parents encouraged that. My parents always said, you know, don't ever use this as a crutch. You know, don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything and don't let anybody see that you can't either. And so I was the fastest kid on the soccer field. I could throw a baseball faster and straighter than anybody. In fact, I was, you know, again, an awesome soccer player. I was like an all city pitcher growing up in Little League and, and even actually did very well in like freshman and sophomore year of high school. Um, towards the end of high school, I sort of got over sports and was more interested in other things. But yeah, so my childhood was definitely different for sure. But yeah, so in addition to having an already skinnier leg on that side, um, I was just a skinny kid in general. You're built, you know, obviously similar to how I'm still built. And I was just long and lean. And I remember, you know, grandparents especially being like, you need to eat, you need to eat and friends and parents friends being like oh you're so skinny let's let's give you a steak and you know just always trying to load me up with the meat and the cheese and let's order a pizza and trying to like see how much they could get me to eat because they thought i of course was starving and you know that hasn't changed um as as an adult people are obviously less concerned but it's funny how i have always kind of remained pretty lean and something happened though like I was saying, kind of going into college, I was lifting weights and I still had this mentality of eat more meat, eat more meat, eat as much as I possibly can to get big and to get strong. And so that's what I did. And throughout college, you know, and you guys, if you've watched our other story um, video, you know that I did my fair share of partying and drinking and eating what, whatever, whenever I wanted, and frankly, not really ever gaining any weight. And that all kind of started to change when about Aaron and I got together. So towards the end of college, she and I kind of uh, bumped back into each other and uh, we had we had formerly known each other in high school but we were just kind of friends and things were all of a sudden different now <laughs> in college uh, we both uh, took a liking to each other obviously and yeah so we got together and we just ate and drank and had so much fun we had about a year and a half of college left together and we lived it up and we had fun and we went to movies and we hung out with friends and we went to concerts and we did the whole thing and we both enjoyed food we ate like i said whatever we wanted and stayed up late and ate pizzas in fact i worked at a bar uh, the last couple of years of college and so i would not get off my job at the bar until like 2 a.m at which point i would pick up a pizza and i wasn't drinking while i was working at the bar so i would get a pizza and like a six pack and aaron and i would eat pizza and drink a few beers uh, you know, when we were like 22 years old <laughs> at three or four in the morning, which was just crazy. And of course, wake up the next day and wonder why we felt like crap and just the cycle would repeat. Well, it got to a point where that really started to catch up with me. It started to catch up with both of us, actually. And, you know, Erin shared her story. Um, we'll actually link hers uh, in the description below. She's got an amazing story that I'm sure that most of you have already seen. But if you haven't, definitely go check out Erin's story as she tells her half of, of this uh, similar, similar story. But for me, I started, of course, having, you know, some anxiety and some panic attacks and some feelings of depression. And I was just like, why am I feeling this way? And when I examined my life and the way that I was living, it seemed pretty obvious that, you know, the way I was eating and the way I wasn't sleeping. And at the time, you know, I was lifting weights and slamming protein shakes, but it certainly wasn't healthy. It certainly wasn't doing my body any good. And so Aaron and I decided together that we were gonna make some changes. As time kind of went on, we both graduated. Erin got her bachelor's degree in biology. She had originally planned to go into med school and study medicine. And I got my bachelor of arts in communication studies. So I have always wanted to work with people, you know, possibly do some counseling or some coaching. 
and maybe even be a therapist. I wasn't quite sure, but I knew that I wanted to be able to, you know, articulate my thoughts and my feelings well, whether speaking to a group or speaking to people or speaking to a camera. And so, yeah, we thought, why don't, what if we combined our, our separate fields and went into like a health and wellness type of coaching? And so that's what we did. And in this journey of kind of going on conferences and learning from other doctors, we kept running into this idea of a plant-based diet. And these doctors kept saying, you know, the more plants, the better, the more plants, the better. Even the doctors that weren't vegan all could agree that the more plants in your diet, the better for your health. And at the time, I was so uncomfortable with my own health. I had extreme discomfort, gut um, discomfort issues with not going to the bathroom right. And the main thing was acid reflux or heartburn, which again, sounds like it's not something that, you know, is, is very bad. We hear, we see it on every single commercial. Do you have heartburn? Do you have heartburn? But I, at the time I was actually on two different medications because my heartburn or my reflux was so bad. And it didn't just make me uncomfortable it affected my mood it affected again my sleep and everything and so i started to you know take note as well as aaron to like well maybe this plant-based diet thing what if what if we tried this you know again being anxious and not just just not feeling right i thought let's make a change let's make a change we were exercising regularly we were riding bikes together we were going to the gym going on runs but they always say you can't out train a bad diet and i think that that finally clicked for me because i realized i look good i felt strong i felt healthy again i've always been pretty lean but on the inside i was definitely not healthy i was inflamed i was just uncomfortable and it was affecting again my mood and my mental health as well so Aaron and i set out to go vegan for 40 days, one year for Lent, we just by happenstance ended up uh, being able to see Dr. Esselstyn talk at a local hospital. And at the time, of course, we didn't know who he was. And now we've met him a few times, but it blew our minds. This idea of eating a vegan diet, which I remember teasing kids in uh, college about being vegetarian or vegan. Uh, all of a sudden now I found myself eating a vegan diet for 40 days and I have to admit I felt amazing. Aaron and I both did. We felt so, so good. Day 41 came along and of course we went through the drive through We got burgers and started eating pizza again and started drinking beers and doing everything that was leaving us feeling in a state of disease. Um, we went back to and I'm not sure why. But it was actually a good thing because it was a reminder and a very loud reminder of, hey, what you eat does and will affect your health. And so we thought, let's maybe go back to this plant-based diet thing. And over the course of you know two years, it happened much faster for Aaron. But me being a meat and potatoes, you know, Nebraska raised kid, I was a little bit more sluggish in my <laughs> plant-based um, adoption but it happened and you know it's been probably six or seven years or five or six maybe years now that that we've been on a completely plant-based diet a vegan diet and just loving it and feeling better and better than ever and fast forward a couple more years now to 2017 we decided to go to Italy and so we did we spent about three weeks in Italy which was just amazing we actually have some uh, vlogs that we recorded while we were there and have put up on the channel so definitely go check those out and we spent the three weeks in Italy and ate a completely plant-based diet and I was we were both a little bit nervous of course you know we were like oh my gosh Italy pizza pasta like you name it like this is all about food and we ate pizza and pasta literally almost every single day. Vegan, of course, senza formaggio means no cheese. And we felt great. You know, whether the wheat is different there, which I know that most everybody can vouch for who's ever been to Europe, you know, no GMOs. And we were just surprised. We were just surprised, number one, that it was as easy as it was to eat a plant-based diet in Italy and to be eating pizza and pasta and still feeling as good as we did. That being said, we both look back at photos and think, wow, we were actually pretty thin 
even though we were eating this stuff, we were still not maybe hitting our targets quite right when it comes to thriving on a plant-based diet. So definitely not for the first time in my life were people looking at me and saying, you need to gain weight. In fact, one incident, Aaron's aunt, who uh, love her to death, but she's one of those people that just says what she feels. She looked at me and she said, Dusty, you're too thin. And it was kind of uncomfortable for the group. It was certainly uncomfortable for me. And, and she was like, no, seriously, I've seen you, you know, look better and bigger, and I'm worried that you're too thin. You know, at the time, I kind of brushed it off and just thought, you know, not, not much of it. And now looking back, I realized, wow, I was super, super thin. And again, I'm gonna attach some photos here if I haven't already so you guys can see that I was very, very thin. So the vegan diet plus running, riding, and doing whatever I wanted to exercise-wise had you know, gotten, for me, I had gotten to a point where I wasn't my biggest or my strongest. And you know, I'm somewhat embarrassed now, of course, looking back at those photos, thinking that I was too thin. So about a year or two later, when I started to realize it myself, I committed to a training program. I got a hold of a friend who was a trainer at a local gym, and I said, hey man, I am wanting to bulk up. It's time for me to get back to my fighting weight, <laughs> you know, like I was in my beer drinking, protein shake pounding college days. And I was like, I wanna get back up, you know, maybe gain 10, 15 pounds. And he was like, cool, let's do it. And I said, can I do it on a vegan diet? He said, absolutely. He said, I'm not even gonna touch your diet. He said, all you have to do is eat more. In fact, you eat as much as you possibly can and let me handle the training. I started lifting every other day, doing full body workouts. Now these were anywhere from an hour to like an hour and 15 minute workouts and just crushing it, crushing weights hard, doing things I'd never done before, lifting more weight than I'd ever had before. And again, feeling great. And I committed to this for about six or seven months. And again, I'll put some, some photos in. I went from the super skinny vegan in Italy to now about 12 or 13 pounds heavier as this, you know, I wouldn't call myself a bodybuilder, but again, I did spend, you know, six or seven months committed to this bodybuilding um, program. And I was able to gain, like I said, I think at my heaviest, I was like 13 pounds heavier, which looked great and it felt great. I had a big booty and made me look big and made me feel like a man. And plus I was so much stronger and it just felt amazing. Shortly after we found out that Aaron was pregnant, you know, we had both committed to just eating more and getting stronger at the same time. And, you know, we had both kind of questioned our hormonal state. And again, once we realized we were both probably at our thinnest point ever, um, we, we both decided that lifting some weights and eating more, um, especially being vegan, we needed to eat more, would probably benefit us. And sure enough, it did. So we had never really had any hormone testing done or anything like that. In fact, we had kind of um, wondered if kids were in our future or not. You know, we had been married for years and kids hadn't showed up yet. But again, all of a sudden, you know, we were both about 10 pounds heavier, feeling good, feeling strong, and Aaron got pregnant. So, you know, I think that's a testament to not just my hormones, but certainly for Aaron's hormones to, you know, there was a shift there. There was a shift where, you know, she reached a certain weight and her hormones seemed to balance out and and for me too and you know we we now have this beautiful baby and i think that it may have something to do with eating a little bit more you know not worrying so much about eating you know 1500 or 2000 calories and just knowing that we're eating the cleanest food on the planet and eating as much of it as we want which you know i i sometimes feel bad about because there are people in the world that are starving, but at the same time, you know, we're growing as much of our food right here behind me in the garden, and there's so much abundance, and you go to the farmer's market, and, and people are sometimes giving food away, and, you know, we think this is actually the abundance diet. A plant-based diet is one where you don't have to murder animals. You know, you can literally grow a good amount of your own food, and, you can buy it cheaply at the store and beans and grains and legumes 
there's definitely not a shortage of this. You know, this food is produced with so much less water and we just had ourselves convinced, we gave ourselves permission to just eat as much as we wanted. And so we did that and you know, now I think both of us are eating about 3,000 to 3,500 calories, even Erin, um, she is breastfeeding. So, you know, she's probably taking on a few more calories um, because of that, but we both still train hard. You know, I still lift weights a few times a week, probably every other day. I've kind of stayed committed to that. My strength is actually more. I'm stronger now. I'm able to bench press more than I, than I was when I was training. I'm faster, I'm stronger, and I just feel better and I think clearer. And I'm so, so glad that we've made the changes that we have. So yeah, kind of getting us back up to speed now where we are currently, you know, my training currently looks like uh, a, probably two to three lifting days a week. I'd like to ride and run in between there, which is something that I did completely stop when I was training before. I quit all cardio and I just lifted and ate a ton. So, you know, that's another reason I was able to gain the weight. But again, I've been able to sustain that weight without having to make myself sick with eating so many calories and lift nonstop. So I really feel like you can go through these waves of you know being a healthy weight or being overweight and being underweight but I really feel like I found a sweet spot now in my diet where you know I could probably eat 500 extra calories and on some days eat 500 less but I just feel like I'm right where I need to be my body is self-regulating I just feel like I'm all of a sudden at this like sweet spot where I feel good in my body I feel like I look good in my body and I'm able to just live my life without having to rely so heavily on my macros, you know, counting calories and making sure I'm eating through my workouts and things like that. We should all be striving to find that perfect balance. And I think what the issue is for most people is fearing the calories. You know, we're all afraid to eat more than 2000 calories a day because that's what, you know, has, has always been recommended. But if you are on a plant-based diet or a vegan diet, I think that you can actually consume a lot more calories. A calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie, as I've heard, you know, Erin say when she was just recording her video, and it's so very true. You know, you look at, you know, 100 calories of, of beef, and you look at 100 calories of, say, bananas, and there are just so many different things going on there. This is gonna stick to you, this is not. And so again, when you clean up your diet and, you, and you're consuming these clean, 100% natural whole foods that I frankly believe are like a, just a perfect gift from God for us to be eating compared to, you know, the uh, uh, at one point bloody piece of muscle from another, you know, being, I don't think that we were meant to consume that besides how it looks, how it smells, how it tastes, by the way it sticks to our body. I feel like the plant-based, whole food plant-based diet, brightly colored, juicy, crunchy, these amazing foods that are again grown from nature, from Mother Earth, are what we could and should be eating besides the fact that they make us feel better, they make us look better, they make us live longer, but also because I feel like you can eat as much of them as you want. If you watch our channel and you go and look at the recipes that we have and you make the recipes and you eat the recipes and you're like, wow, I feel so good, I feel so alive, and you can find that sweet spot for yourself, like I feel like Aaron and I are kind of finding for ourselves, you will see that this is the abundance diet. This truly is the way to be able to live long, healthy lives. And again, not have to self-regulate, not have to count calories and not have to worry about if what you're eating is possibly killing you. So I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here and I wanna leave you guys with just a few tidbits and some, some advice. And again, it all comes down to what we've always said, which is why Aaron and I named our channel what we did, and that is Eat, Move, Rest. The three things that we all do every day, but we could all be doing better. And I think, number one, we have to eat, right? We have to eat to live. And wouldn't it be nice if we could live to eat? 
and enjoy our food and do it in a way like I just said where we don't have to worry if the food we're eating is harming us and and again a whole food plant-based diet in my opinion and a countless number of research papers and doctors opinions and all of this new information is coming out confirming that idea that a plant-based diet is easily the best diet for health longevity for mood and just everything and it shouldn't necessarily have to be something we think so much about it just comes natural and if we're eating the right foods in their natural state we don't have to think and worry about them as much so again go through the recipes that we have check out the blog Aaron has a number of just amazing mouth-watering recipes that are all plant-based that are all vegan that we've been living on for probably six or seven years now and just loving it so that brings me to number two move moving your body is so absolutely essential we've all been stuck in our houses now throughout this whole covid 19 situation it's um, june now and i think we're all super excited and glad that summer is finally here so yeah besides the positive mental effects of uh, physical movement and exercise and, and working out it has really helped my situation with my leg and my back to just you know stay long and lean and limber and again stretching has been key Aaron and I joke recently we've been joking about feeling like we're just getting old because we both feel sore when we get out of bed for like the first two or three minutes we're just like hunched over and Aaron's ankles hurt and my back hurts and we joke about it but I really do feel like things could be a lot worse. And especially for me in my situation, you know, I've always feared the day, you know, I see an old man walking with a cane or I see someone in a wheelchair and I think, gosh, you know, could that be me someday? You know, I'm just by birth, you know, I have this sort of condition that could catch up to me. And I really feel like on my diet and living this type of lifestyle where I'm conscious of always staying active and moving I like knowing that I'm doing everything I possibly can to take the best care of myself and I'll thank myself when I'm 70 that I did this stuff you know starting in my 20s and you know so that's another reason why Aaron and I recommend this diet why we recommend moving and resting and doing them the best you possibly can you know not just for now because you will feel benefits now but also for later because you know your 50, your 60, your 70, and your 80 year old self are gonna thank you for starting today or for starting whenever you did. Last one and possibly the most important is rest. I'm just gonna touch on something I went through the last year or year and a half. That was a short bout of insomnia and adrenal fatigue and just not feeling myself. I was anxious, I was depressed, and again, I wasn't sleeping. And I feel like the not sleeping perpetuated the awful feeling throughout the day and the awful feeling then kept me up at night. And so it was just this vicious cycle that eventually I got my sleep back on track and things started to smooth out. You know, just like we need to plug our phone in at the end of every day, we have to rest and recharge for ourselves and not just, you know, closing our eyes to sleep at night, but that's also taking a few minutes or an hour or two a night to sit down with loved ones, to share a meal, to watch TV, to sit a to watch a movie, you know, kick your legs up, to play with your kids and just rest and recharge. Maybe you do some yoga or maybe you do some stretching. And then obviously we recommend, you know, six to eight hours of sleep every single night. In fact, throughout this quarantine thing, we've been getting like eight, sometimes nine hours of sleep and you can sleep too much. I'll say that I, I can feel a little groggy if I sleep too much, but I also have seen you know, an improvement in my skin, in my mood, in my energy, and again, my hormones just feel you know, refueled when I get more sleep. Really thinking about changing your lifestyle to again, eat, move, and rest your best, um, it's gonna it's gonna help you in the long run and things take time you know coming off my heartburn and acid reflux medication took me at least a year like a year and a half actually before I felt like my gut and things got sorted out but I didn't give up I stayed with the diet I worked the whole you know vegan program if you will and my body healed itself and so no matter your age no matter your size no matter your condition 
I really feel like we can all heal. Our bodies want to heal. You know, you hear stories about people who quit smoking after, you know, three packs a day, every day for 40 years, and they look at their lungs, you know, months later, and they've almost completely regenerated. Now, that's not everyone, you know, obviously, um, you know, there is some irreparable damage in, in a lot of cases, unfortunately, but I think our bodies really do want to heal themselves. And I think giving them the proper fuel is going to give it the best shot. So again, I believe in a high carb, whole food plant-based diet. If you guys do a Google search and you know search what is the body's main fuel source, it'll say glycogen in the form of carbohydrates, which again is why you know I take in 60 to 70% carbohydrates in my diet. I eat about 20% fat and 20% protein, and I just feel amazing. And again, I keep active, I stay moving, I'm always stretching, and I get adequate rest every single night, sometimes even more, because why not? Who doesn't like to sleep in once in a while? And I'm gonna interject too and say, if you guys wanna follow me daily and keep up with me daily, find me on Instagram, at dbstanzik. You'll see what I eat and how I move on a daily basis. So again, we love reaching people on YouTube, but Instagram is fun because it's just easier to DM. You know, you can send me a question or give me a like or whatever. And again, you can see what I'm eating and how I'm moving every single day on Instagram. Follow me at dbstanzik. Please give this video a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell to stay notified when we post new videos. And the most important thing you can do to help share our message and to help us grow and reach more people would be to share this video. So if you have a friend or family member that you think could benefit from this video or any of the other videos on our channel, please share them. Share them in a text, share them to Facebook, share them on Instagram, and tag us. We like to see when people share us because it helps us to connect and give you a big thank you. So anyway, thanks for following along. Eat, move, rest, your best. Peace, guys. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.